Hello, this is Mark Billy with Yard of Diesel. So glad you could join me. Yard of Diesel is about diesel and automotive efficiency, performance, maintenance, and preparedness. Today I'm going to share some steps and tips I learned when replacing the timing chain on my 2007 Mercedes R320 CDI. Now the R320 CDI is an all-wheel drive turbo diesel minivan that uh, as Mine has been modified, has over 400 pound-feet of torque, and gets 30 miles per gallon on the highway. It's an awesome machine. It is equipped with an OM642 3-liter V6 diesel. So if you also have a Mercedes vehicle that uses this engine, and it's used in a lot of Mercedes ranging from E320s and, uh, to Sprinters, uh, starting in 2007. This is a very common engine used worldwide by Mercedes. And so the things I'm going to show you would apply to any OM642 engine. Now the problem I ran into was that the OM642 is known for stretching chains and I heard mine ticking. So I looked into it. I pulled the oil cap and looked at the tensioner I found an example online where the hole was showing uh, that's on the right side of this picture and um, they had said that their timing was retarded 15 degrees and it's past the Mercedes manual limit of 11 degrees. Now if I look at my tensioner, not only is the hole showing on the right hand side of this picture but also the shoulder of the piston is also showing this tensioner was stretched so far that there's no way it was really providing much in the way of tensioning anymore. It was at its limit. Not that there was anything wrong with the tensioner, although I did replace it. Uh, it's really just that the, ten the chain has stretched so much that the tensioner is already pushed out to its limit. The timing was so bad on mine when I did pull things apart and was able to look at the timing marks on the cams as well as on the crankshaft, I found that my valve timing was retarded by 15 degrees so this really did need to be done if it continued onward as the tensioner can't do anything more to take up slack in the chain if it continues to stretch next thing we'd be starting to jump teeth and possibly damaging the engine so i needed to dig in and get this done now in this video i'm not going to show you every step of this process. I would recommend that you go get the Mercedes WIS which is the workshop instruction system. Uh, it's available online. It's basically an online manual or it's a digital manual. It covers all Mercedes vehicles. In this video I will cover some key items and pain points that I learned the hard way. The big picture of this is that you might expect that you have to remove the valve covers and the timing cover off the front of the engine in order to access the chain as it goes around cams in both heads and down around the crankshaft. But that's not true. The fact is that you can do this entire operation removing only the right side valve cover giving access to the sprocket on that side. Then the theory is that you can break the chain there and by turning the engine over, you can pull the new chain into the engine with the old chain. And then when the, when the uh, chain wakes it, works its way all the way through the system, you can disconnect on the air side. So here's where my pain is your gain. I've got some tips and tricks from doing this effort. Let me start with a very, very important tool here. This is made by Baum Tools. It costs about $80. That sounds expensive, but there's a lot of very similar tools that are a lot more expensive. This one is for the OM642 and it's used to hold the chain onto the intake camshaft sprocket. What that does is it makes certain that when you're rotating the crankshaft and feeding the new chain into the engine as the old chain is coming out, you make absolutely certain that you don't jump a tooth. If you jump a tooth, you're going to screw up the timing and have a lot more work to do. However, this tool did a great job for me. These curved surfaces here kept the chain on the sprocket and the tool did its job. When removing the valve cover from the Mercedes engine, I think there's like 15 bolts on there or something. You could probably count what's in the picture. But the bottom line is that you've got a lot of bolts they are all in different sizes and you need to know which one goes where. So what I do is I take a piece of cardboard and I take a trusty knife and go ahead and punch holes in the cardboard so that I can push the bolts through the cardboard in the configuration, in the arrangement 
in which they are installed. And that way when I go to reinstall, there's no doubt about which bolt goes where. Another tip, the next issue I ran into was removing the valve cover. It was actually fairly difficult after I got all the bolts off from it. And what I wound up using was a slide hammer on an ear on one corner of the valve cover. There was one website that recommended doing it this way. And I hooked up a slide hammer to it. I had to fab up an adapter to get the slide hammer to attach. Problem is, you're only screwing into aluminum. There's not even an insert in there. So as soon as I hit it with the slide hammer, I stripped it out. So I had to drill it out and install a helicoil. I had to drill it out, tap it, and install the helicoil. And that was a major pain, and I wouldn't recommend it because it turns out that when I drilled that hole, it punched through to the inside so that this could have become a new oil leak. So there was um, some patchwork that I had to do on this valve cover as a result of that. Instead, what I would do next time is there are a pair of holes at the part line on the front of the valve cover. They align with the camshafts. One is used to attach the vacuum pump. The other just has a blank insert installed, but what I would do is I'd remove the blank insert and with the vacuum pump already removed at this step of the operation, I would put something in there that could be expanded. I would machine something out of aluminum or wood even, something soft that could go into those holes and then press outward in order to uh, remove the valve cover. I think that would be a lot easier on things. Uh, providing steady pressure is something I always prefer to uh, hammering on things. The third problem I ran into was with the tool I purchased. I purchased a rather inexpensive $65 tool and first of all I would just buy a higher quality tool to begin with but but the first problem I ran into is that these tools, even the good ones, would not provide a lot of clearance. They're behind the double row of sprockets the hold the double row timing chain in place there's a gear because the exhaust camshaft is geared off the intake camshaft and so when you go to remove these you quickly find out that the camshaft gear is in the way back behind the sprockets so multiple times I had to remove and reinstall the camshaft what I would do next time First of all, I'd buy a better tool, but second, I would take the little anvils and the other parts of the other adapters that are used with the tool and grind them down, cut them down, do whatever I had to do to find a way to clear that sprocket or uh, access the chain on the sprockets while clearing the gear back behind them. The next problem I ran into with the tool was that the... Uh, there's a temporary link that's supposed to be installed and the way that I just described installing the new chain is not uncommon in Mercedes. And so there's a temporary link that you can install. The problem is the temporary link that came with it had pins with a diameter that was too large for it to be installed. And instead I wound up installing another pin. Um, one of the pins that I removed from the original chain I used to install the new chain temporarily and because there's a different colored link it's obvious where you are during the installation process but by temporarily using one of the old pins after a little bit of grinding I was able to uh, make it work that way but again if you buy a higher quality tool you won't run into the problem that I ran into because you'll wind up with a good temporary link. The third problem I ran into was with the anvils, the uh, adapters that come with these tools are not made out of very good steel when you buy the Chinese version that I bought. And so when one is installing the, when you've installed the pins and the cover on the back side of the chain, you need this groove here in order to mushroom the head of the pins. You kind of mushroom the head of the pins so that they kind of taper at the top and the bottom. and that's part of what makes sure that the chain stays in there permanently and doesn't come out while you're driving down the road. So what I wound up doing was I wound up grinding my own groove after I'd modified the tool to try and get some better clearance to make things work. And again, buy a higher quality tool than what I bought. Buy a good one and you won't regret it.